Okay, so we're going to move on with special tests. The first of which you're likely to do within your observation, your standing observation, because this is the Trendelenburg test. So what we'll do, if you could just stand facing the window, please. Some of you guys can watch this. <laughs> what we'll do is ask our client, so Jodie, could you just take your right foot off the floor, please? And you need to just bend your knees, so that's it. Okay. And what we need to do is observe from behind and see that we get a normal pelvic tilt. So a normal pelvic tilt will involve this side coming up to allow the foot to come off the floor. And that is facilitated by glute medius on this side contracting to pull the pelvis in that direction. So, can you put your foot down again? <coughs> and now show us your left foot coming off the floor. Okay, so you can see there was a slight tilt there um, the way that it should be. And put that down, we'll just have another check on the right side. Yeah, so that's lifting slightly, okay? So if it's weak, what will happen is that as Jodie takes her foot off the floor, this side will actually drop a little bit, okay? Uh, and it may be very subtle to observe. You may actually see it see, stay almost level or drop. Either way, it's an indication that perhaps there is a weakness there and that you've got to start strengthening up glute medius. At this stage, if we were doing a full examination, you may also think about checking the rest of the firing patterns as we've done within advanced soft tissue techniques. So you may have them lying prone on the couch, doing leg extensions and comparisons between hamstrings and glutes firing, and then your back extensors <coughs> and glutes as well. Because if there's a weakness in glute need, the chances are the yeah, imbalance may have transferred elsewhere as well. Okay? Okay. Let's just move the couch back in this direction. If you could lie, uh, head that end, face up, please. Okay. One of the first things we would do in conjunction with checking pelvis and posture and so on is your leg length discrepancy. So once again, you would take your client, just draw the two medial malleoli together, just gently stretch the legs to try and make sure that the pelvis is nicely aligned and then we'll move up and just check with thumbs over ASIS's to make sure that that alignment is pretty level from this position. Okay? If we're comfortable that that is level there, we can go back and just check down here. Now we draw the two medial malleoli together with your thumbs placed over each and just have a look at your thumbs and see if there's any discrepancy there which will give you an indication that one limb may be longer than the other. Okay. Now this is an observed leg length discrepancy. As we said before, if you want to be completely accurate about this you will need to measure from bony prominence to bony prominence and we would go from ASIS usually down to the medial malleolus but if the shape of the limb is such that you're not getting a very good line there, you may go to the lateral malleolus, as long as you're consistent. And then you'll compare the measurement with the opposite limb. For now, if you've got an apparent leg length discrepancy, what we then want to try and find out is whether the femur is longer than the femur on the other side, or the tibias are out. So to do that, we would just put hands underneath the knees, draw the legs up so that the knees are flexed to about 90 degrees and once again we would now quite deliberately bring the two medial malleoli together so we make sure that they are absolutely level and you will then observe from both sides of the body and you'll get down to have a look at the alignment of both the thighs and the fronts of the tibias and the knees, okay? Now if I can't see from this side the right thigh, that may be an indication that this is higher on this side, and that would indicate that this tibia is longer, okay? It's always worthwhile going around to the other side to check. 
So if I suspected that was the case from that side, I should be able to see more of this thigh and, and not much of that. Okay. Similarly, if one of the femurs is longer, then you will see the tibia uh, being more pronounced on that side. And of course, again, you'll see that more from one side than the other. Okay. So that will establish any leg length discrepancies, and that may add in to your assessment if there's lateral tilt there as well. Yeah? How do you know which angle you're meant to look at? Like? Which angle? Uh, like where you're meant to look at the leg to see if you can see the other one. Uh, do it from both sides to make sure, because sometimes you'll look from one side and you'll think, oh yeah, I can see more thigh from that side. You go around to the other side and you think, hang on a minute, I can now see more from the opposite side. So it makes you correct the way that you're actually observing. But if there's a discrepancy there, it's, it's normally, if, it, if there's enough of a discrepancy, it's normally quite obvious. Yeah? Am I making sense? Yeah. Does that answer your question? Okay. Okay. So at this point, we have done Trendelenburg, we've done leg length discrepancy, and we've built that onto the rest of your salt apps procedure. If we now, with Jody lying supine, do some more tests, the <coughs> first that I would do would be passive circumduction. And this would be checking for any joint lesion deep within the actual ball and socket joint of the hip. To do this, you would pick up the limb like so. So you'll flex the knee first of all, and then we're going to change hand positions. So I've got underneath the heel, and then on the front part of the knee like so. Because what I'm going to do with this passive circumduction is to try and push the femur into that joint at the same time as I'm circumducting. And I may feel a grinding sensation or something like that, but most of all, I'm trying to see whether this elicits any discomfort or not. The extent of the circumduction that I can do will depend on me maintaining pressure into that joint. So from here, I'm going to move around, and now pulling femur into that socket and as I come around to the near side I'm pushing again. And I go all the way around at least once and I always go back in the other direction as well. Okay. So that's your passive circumvention. Alright? Any questions on that? Okay. If we now move on to Faber's test Favours, if you remember, uh, is a combination of joint actions. So you have hip flexion, abduction, and external rotation. It spells out favour for you. So it's basically a figure of four position. So if we pick the limb up like so, place the sole of the foot against the opposite limb, and just allow the knee to drop out. And this is a fairly indiscriminate test in, in that it can test for three different things. One, it can be joint lesion again. So just that light pressure of the femur being forced into the socket from this angle can cause discomfort. A second may be that there is a hip flexor strain, so particularly iliopsoas muscle. If the leg drops out and that's causing any discomfort, um, because it's externally rotated, you taken the lesser trochanter further round and now the hip flexors are slightly on stretch. So it may be an indication of that. And then the final one, because of this movement, um, basically you are stressing the sacroiliac joint and particularly the anterior ligaments from this position. So if I wanted to do that more forcefully I could stabilise the pelvis, just push down a little bit and if that elicited pain from around the back um, that would be an indication that there's a sprain of the SI joint there on this side. So Faber's really just leads you on to further testing because there's those three possibilities there. Okay. From here, you might move on and do Thomas and Kendall test, and I'll assume that you'll know how to do those. That's where you're standing the client against the end of the couch, rolling them back and checking for the length of your iliopsoas muscles. And of course, whilst they're in that position, you can find indications for type ITB, if the leg is abducted, <coughs> poss 
to be tight piriformis or lateral hamstrings if the foot is externally rotated. There are suggestions that it could also be sartorius, but it's quite rare that that one is tight as it is the longest muscle in the body. So we don't tend to include that one. Okay? So moving on, whilst the client is supine, we can now do what we call an anterior distraction test. So we've just partially tested for sacroiliac ligaments, and particularly the anterior ligaments. So what we do now is find the ASISs, and once we're comfortable that we're on those bony prominences, we swap hands over, and we rest the heel of the hand, push them down and outwards on one side, and the same on the opposite side, and then we just give a gentle downwards and outwards kind of shunt, and have a little look at the client's face just to make sure that there's no response there, and you can push a little bit harder on the second go just to check the integrity of those particular ligaments. And again, just remember this is moving the, the two ilia outwards like that, so the pain will be felt around the back region. Okay? <coughs> if we now turn you onto your side, if you can face April over there, please, we're going to do what we call a modified overs test to check for ITB length. So Jody's got into a comfortable position. Um, yeah, if you want to put that sort of hand down, that's, uh, that's, that's under your head, that's it, good. And use this hand just to hold onto the couch, please, steady yourself. Okay, so that's a nice stable position. We can have a look at the torso and make sure it's not too rotated. The aim here is going to get, be to get this femur directly in line with the torso, so we don't want that too twisted. <coughs> the lower leg has got to stabilise but be out of the way for this particular test. So Jody's is already flexed at the knee, that's ideal, and I can see from the alignment that it will be out of the way when I'm ready, ready to test. Adjust the height of the couch here because you're going to get into a kind of squat position and you don't want to get too low for this. So just bring your client up. And what I'm then going to do is take this limb and start by just clamping the ankle underneath my armpit so I've got most of the control from there. Okay? I support underneath the knee and I also support the pelvis here just to make sure that that's not uh, either rocking too far forwards or backwards. And I keep that again aligned with the back. I'm going to draw the knee back until the femur is directly in line and that's important <coughs> because I've got to have the ITB positioned over that greater trochanter. And the whole idea is that when I release the pressure on the knee, the length of the ITB is measured by how far the knee drops. If I flex the hip, the band will drop in front of the greater trochanter, and then you won't get a true test, and the same with extension. So that's aligned in a nice straight line. The idea of you squatting down is to make sure that the ankle is level with the hip joint. If I stand tall, then the knee's not going to drop, drop very far. Once I'm sure of all of those positions, I just take the pressure away from underneath the knee and see how far towards the couch it goes. The other test I can do is just push to see if it bounces, and that's the resistance of the ITB. If, it's, if she's guarding with muscular control there, you won't get that telltale bounce that's going on. And obviously, the nearer towards the couch that is, the more flexible Jody is in her ITB on that side. Okay? Any questions on that? Could you continue turning over onto your front, please? Okay. Um, apart from checking piriformis length and other muscle lengths, so from here you can do the knees flex, leg dropping out to see length of piriformis. Uh, we would do a posterior distraction test, or HIBS test as it's known. Similar to on the front, you're going to find the PSISs, and once again, heel pressure over both sides, just push downwards and outwards, this time checking for the posterior ligaments on the sacroiliac joint. And any pain or discomfort there will show you that that's, that's a problem. And a second way of testing that is to just put your hand over the sacrum, just make sure you're in the middle there, 
and do almost like a chest compression in first aid, just a little push downwards, and that too will be another way of checking for SI joint posterior ligaments. Okay? We're not asking you to do it within this assessment, but if you were to bring in other ASTT assessments, you might be checking firing patterns, you might also, for neurological problems, be checking slump test and straight leg raise. Okay? But that, for the moment, completes <coughs> special tests. Anybody have any questions? If you say miss one of the tests in the exam, will you be marked down? Um, no, we'll probably prompt you. I mean, it's difficult to remember every single test. So if you get the majority of them and you're clearly very capable about how you're testing, then it won't really detract too much, the fact that you've forgotten one. Um, again, we recognise the difficulty that you're having to randomly do all tests, no matter what, and you're not getting any subjective feedback here. So um, it's not an easy task, so for that reason, if there was one missing, we'd probably prompt you for it. Okay? Any other questions? There's one more, the fulcrum test. Thank you. Fulcrum test, I've forgotten that one. Okay, could you sit up, please, with your legs hanging over that side of the couch? Thank you, John. So, fulcrum test is checking for stress fractures normally in the neck of the femur. So, we're looking at this region up here, and we literally perform a fulcrum by putting a fist underneath the mid thigh region and just push down on the uh, distal part of the femur that stress of leveraging up the neck of the femur uh, will be enough to cause any sort of pain or discomfort so if you can lift your leg get that under there like so comfortable with that yep no bruising or anything there and just push down gently like so and if there were a problem in that region then yeah it would be certainly uncomfortable did you see how I did that? Yeah? yeah? Comfortable with that? Okay. Have I covered everything that's on your sheets? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Hungry? I'm <laughs>